Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, protests about the war in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas enters its sixth day. And the Supreme Court hears a landmark homelessness case, its first in decades. Plus, we are tracking a patchy frost threat through tonight. Those details on the way as Mountain News at 5.30 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Columbia University canceled in-person classes today as campus protests regarding the Israel-Hamas war stretch into a sixth day. On the eve of Passover, Jewish students say they do not feel safe. And the number of pro-Palestinian protests on college campuses around the country is growing. CBS's Meg Oliver has the latest from New York City. Outside Columbia University, supporters of Israel marched in solidarity with Jewish students who say they feel unsafe after nearly a week of on-campus protests against the Israel-Hamas war. If I'm not going to go in and go into their camp and risk my safety. I have a right to my education. Monday, the university switched to mandatory remote learning and promised to significantly increase on-campus security. Pro-Palestinian demonstrations on and off campus have not let up. Free, free the private school had asked the NYPD to clear an encampment last Thursday, accusing demonstrators of trespassing. Monday, the NYPD announced it's patrolling outside campus and not aware of any credible threats to students. We have to wait until they decide that they want our presence on their campus before we move in. Police were invited onto Yale's campus Monday, arresting more than 40 people at an encampment. Protesters are demanding the university divest from military weapons manufacturers. An institution that's dedicated to academic excellence that has no place funding a war machine that spreads across the entire globe. Demonstrations are impacting other campuses across the country, including NYU, Harvard, and the University of Colorado. At USC in Los Angeles, students are protesting the school's cancellation of the valedictorian speech at commencement. The school cited safety issues. The valedictorian, Asna Tabassum, is Muslim. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. Columbia University's president says discussions are underway to find the next steps to end the crisis. She did not give any indication when on-campus classes would resume. Israel's intelligence chief has resigned over the October 7th terror attack. A statement from the military says Aharon Haliva will retire once his successor is appointed. He's the first senior military official to resign over the Hamas attacks. TikTok is vowing to challenge a potential U.S. ban of its app. Saturday, the House passed a foreign aid package that calls for TikTok's Chinese parent, ByteDance, to sell it within 270 days or risk being banned nationwide. In an internal memo to employees, the company says it is planning to file a court challenge if the bill is signed into law. TikTok has publicly opposed the bill, saying it infringes on its users' First Amendment rights. Donald Trump's lawyers and the New York AG's office have come to terms on a $175 million bond. Trump initially posted the bond through Knight Specialty Insurance for the civil fraud judgment he's in the process of appealing. The state AG had challenged the bond due to concerns about the financial abilities of the California-based underwriter. The agreement says Trump has to keep the $175 million in a Charles Schwab account that's being used to secure the bond. People are remembering the life of former Arkansas governor and U.S. Senator David Pryor. According to his son, who's also a former senator, Pryor died of natural causes in Little Rock last weekend. He was in political office for more than 30 years. President Biden served alongside Pryor in the Senate for 18 years and called him a friend. David Pryor was 89 years old.
We are tracking some awesome weather on this Earth Day. A live look from the WYNT studios overlooking portions of hazard. Not a cloud in the sky here in Perry County. That current temperature also comfortable. A little bit below average. We should be in the lower 70s. Most of us in the middle to lower 60s up to 62 in Jackson. 60 for Pikeville. 65 in Harlan and 64 over in Manchester at this hour. So again, we are a little bit cooler for this time of year, but not too bad as we go into the this evening up on first alert pinpoint Doppler all thanks to high pressure. We are tracking some more dry weather into this evening and that will keep us dry. Also mainly clear to close out your Monday and as a result those lows are chilly to wake up in the morning. Once again we see lows in the upper 30s to lower 40s to wake up and walk out the door on your Tuesday. So be sure to protect those sensitive plants as we have a frost advisory in place for all of us and that will last through 9 a.m. on Tuesday. Most of your Tuesday is dry, but those rain chances are set to increase once again by Tuesday night. Also pushing into parts of your Wednesday. More details on that next rain chance coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. An investigation is underway in Oklahoma after five people were found dead in a Yukon home. Oklahoma City Police were called to the scene this morning. They say at least two of the victims were children. Authorities have not released any identities but have determined this was a homicide. There is no word if the people killed were related. The Oklahoma City Police Department issued a statement calling this matter a, quote, tragic, very sad situation. A group of homeless people in Grants Pass, Oregon, sued when the city passed a law in 2018 which banned camping by homeless people in the town. That case made it all the way to the Supreme Court where justices heard arguments today about whether the ban can be considered a cruel and unusual punishment. CBS's Nicole Skanga has more from the Supreme Court. The nation's struggle with homelessness reached the Supreme Court Monday for arguments about whether a ban on people sleeping in Grants Pass, Oregon's public parks is constitutional. What will the city do if you don't prevail here? The city's hands will be tied. It will be forced to surrender its public spaces as it has been. The law fines people nearly $300 for sleeping outside when shelter beds are available. Repeat offenders can be sent to jail for 30 days. Lawyers for the city argued the law is compassionate. The high court's conservative justices seemed open to those claims. How does this law help deal with the complicated policy issues? One of the most difficult challenges is getting people the help that they need, and laws like this allow cities to intervene. The court's liberal justices question whether the law criminalizes homelessness. What you do is say, only homeless people who sleep outdoors will be arrested. That's the testimony of your chief of police. There's nothing in the law that criminalizes homelessness. I really that's want what, to. I, that's what you say, and, but if I look at the record and see differently, it's a different argument. The appeals court struck down the measure saying it violated the Eighth Amendment because it punishes people for something they don't have control over. Monday, justices weighed whether homelessness is someone's status or their conduct. A number of us, I think, are having difficulty with the distinction between status and conduct. Violating this ordinance means you're homeless. So again, homelessness is not something you can uh, that you do. It's just something that you are. A ruling is expected by the end of June. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, the Supreme Court. A number of mayors, both liberal and conservative from across the country, submitted briefs in support of the Grants Pass case. Meanwhile, homeless rights advocates protested outside the courthouse during arguments. The Catholic Action Center in Lexington hosted a rally today to stand behind those who are unhoused as they prepare for the Safer Kentucky Act to go into effect. It will make camping in public places a violation on a first offense and a misdemeanor on the second. One man who lost his wife in February ended up losing his home. Today was his first meal in three days. William Power has been on the Street Voice Council for 23 years. Power says he was afraid to be involved at first. I was about ready to die one time, and I told him, I said, Lord, you save me. I'll do what you've asked me to do. Now Power serves up a hot meal for some of Lexington's unhoused community. It is his way of giving back and sending their message. It is not a crime to be homeless. 
Former U.S. Representative Liz Cheney is going after the Supreme Court after she published an op-ed in the New York Times. Cheney says the court will have a, quote, profoundly negative impact if it does not resolve former President Trump's immunity case and that the public may never hear critical and historic evidence when it comes to the January 6th attacks on the Capitol. Cheney served as vice chair of the House Select Committee investigating the attack. Vice President Kamala Harris was in Wisconsin today. This is Harris's third time visiting the Badger State this year. She started the day in the city of La Crosse, advocating for better nursing home standards before heading to a campaign event for reproductive freedom. While Harris was in Wisconsin, President Biden was visiting Florida, also campaigning on reproductive rights. Being in debt is never fun, but what's worse than that? Pretending it's not happening. We'll hear from an expert about why it's important to keep up with it. And rain chances are set to return by tomorrow night. More details on those showers after this break.